Hey guys, it's Lauren. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about influencer collaborations with makeup brands. This video is going to be loaded. We're going to talk about the really good collabs and the good aspects of collabs. We're going to be talking about the, you know, bad collabs and the bad aspects of collabs and also just the ugly of collabs in general. Before we get into it, I do want to say as kind of a disclaimer, and I don't love doing disclaimers, but I feel like with this, I kind of want to because I don't want anyone to get it misconstrued that I dislike makeup collabs because I honestly think it's great. I think that it gives creators the recognition that they deserve and it gives them so many more opportunities. And I think when done well, they're great. So with that being said, there's so many, you know, collaborations that are executed very, very well, but there's also a lot that aren't. And, you know, maybe a collaboration has good aspects and some bad aspects. So we're going to be talking about the really good ones, the really bad ones, and the ones that just kind of fall somewhere in between. Um, I will kind of touch on celebrity makeup collaborations uh, with different brands and then I'll also talk about like influencers that have created their own brand but I'm not going to really talk about those for too long. If you guys want to see dedicated videos on those two topics then I'd be happy to do them in the future. Uh, just let me know in the comments section down below if that's something you'd be interested in. And after this if you're wanting to see more of my chattier videos and then make sure to check out a playlist I'll have linked down below in the description box and in the cards in the upper right hand corner right up there if you want to check it out. But let's go ahead and get into this video because I have a lot to say. It could be a long one. So here I have a little notepad with all of the you know ideas that I really want to touch on throughout this video I feel like when I have you know something new that I want to add to the conversation where I'm not just regurgitating what you've heard a thousand times from beauty creators because let's be honest the overall consensus on makeup collaborations is very similar throughout creator to creator in the beauty YouTube community so I don't want it to just be me saying what you've heard a thousand times I really want there to be at least some new ideas introduced throughout this idea or not necessarily new but just um less talked about ideas throughout this video because I'm sure there's someone who has mentioned everything I've said in this before. But here's the deal. I also want to make sure I don't go off on a tangent because there's a lot of thoughts that I have on this topic and I just don't want to sit here forever and ever going off on a complete different, you know, all these other ideas. So let's start off with the rise of collaborations. That's kind of where I want to start. When did they begin? Where did they begin? And I feel like a lot of different people have a lot of different like ideas of when did it all start and what collaboration was the earliest and the biggest. But for me, in my mind, one of the earliest and largest launches that I can remember uh, that was in collaboration with a beauty influencer was the Jaclyn Hill and Becca collaboration where they came out with the Shimmering Skin Perfector and its Champagne Pop. And I don't always immediately purchase like collaborations. I feel like a lot of times I'll wait to hear reviews because sometimes they are suspect, you know, um, the products and I just want to wait till I spend my own money till I've heard like somebody else talk about it and someone who I trust talk about it. But this one, I jump, jumped right on the bandwagon, purchased the product, and I'm really glad I did. I really enjoy it. Um, I like the Becca Shimmering Sam Perfector formula in general, so it wasn't much of a surprise that if it's the exact same formula and just in a shade that I know I'm going to like, it's like a white gold uh, color that I feel like, I don't know if a lot of people were trying to get on Jacqueline's good side because she was and still is one of the largest beauty YouTubers here on the platform, but I feel like the overall you know, I don't know, opinion of this product was really well received by, you know, pretty much everyone. I really, very rarely heard someone talk poorly about this product. And I think it's because it is actually really good in my opinion. And you may think, oh, it's awful. But for me, and what I've heard most frequently is that it's really good. So still enjoy that to this day, even throughout all her scandals. It's like I purchased it, you know, and I'm pretty sure now she doesn't even make a commission off the champagne pop highlighter that like every time I sell one now, I don't think she's even making money off of it. So if you want it, go get it. And even if you're not a supporter of Jacqueline, I don't really want to talk about the people behind all these collaborations very much because especially her, because I think my opinion it's wavering. I really am someone who I'm just not sure about Jacqueline. And I feel like there are other people out there like that, but that's a topic for another day. So that was in like 2015. And then I feel like in 2016, we had the Makeup Geek and um, Manny MUA collaboration. Uh, that was a palette that was very interesting. I never did end up picking it up because one, I didn't watch Manny at that time. I went through a very short phase where I did uh, watch Manny MUA, but at that time I was not watching him yet. And I really did not have much, um, I don't know. I wasn't very intrigued by Makeup Geek as a brand, so I did not end up picking that up, but I remember that being a very popular launch, and to be quite honest, I remember that coming out before the Jaclyn Hill champagne bot thing, but when I looked it up, um, I realized that was 2016, and then one of the largest launches, I would say, with a collab, like an influencer that got a lot of attention from the media and just from people in general, is the Nikki, Nikki Tutorials collaboration with Too Faced, and this... 
this was interesting. This was a sketchy collaboration. I'm, I don't want to get into it because I don't know the facts too, too well because honestly I took a break from, you know, YouTube and the beauty community just even watching before I had a channel at that point. And so I don't really want to talk about it very much because I don't know all the details, but there are a plethora of videos. I mean, if you just search Nikki Tutorials Too Faced, you will find just all the details that you're looking for. But those three launches I feel like were some of the most popular early launches that I feel like really got a lot of attention. I feel like, you know, they just were big launches, but I feel like none of them can compare to this next big launch. And this to me is where like I felt like influencer collaborations just stepped up. They amplified and I think this is the kind of catalyst of that. I think that the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette, the original palette, the like I believe 35 pan, maybe it's 39. I don't really know, but I even have that palette. I really enjoy it, but that palette, I feel like kicked off a lot. I think the amount of attention that the, that palette got really showed brands, not just Morphe or Makeup Geek or not that, I don't think Becca was ever really a smaller brand. I feel like as soon as they hit the market, I mean, I don't know, but as long as I've been around in the beauty community, I've considered it to be a more established brand. And I feel like Morphe and Makeup Geek, as someone who's always kind of been like, I mean, Marlena from Makeup Geek, I'm kind of going on a tangent here, but she was an influencer first before she created her brand. And then I feel like as soon as Morphe came on the scene, they were already working with influencers, you know, giving out their codes and Makeup Geek did that as well. So I feel like they were always kind of intertwined in the beauty influencer community, but now it kind of breaks apart from that. And after people saw how well the, I mean, I have no idea how much money that palette made, but I mean, I can't even, Think to imagine because I still see it getting sold like hotcakes. So that was a very, very, very popular launch. And I think that really started a whole new generation of just brands being like, whoa, this is a profitable industry and we can make money off these people. So I feel like in 2017, that is when these collaborations become more and more common. Like it's no longer these collaborations with traditional celebrities. Brands are focusing more on influencers because they have their name for a reason. They have a great level of influence on the people that watch them and you know, they're gonna buy what has their name on it because those people really do follow them and, you know, trust them and all of that. And especially at that point in time before a lot more had, you know, things are starting to come out, but there's a lot more trust in influencers at that time because not as much was known about the, you know, behind the scenes part of it. And we'll get into that. But I feel like they're kind of a switch. Like it's no longer celebrities, it's now influencers. And I would argue that now in 2019, there are, maybe not in 2017, but in 2019, there are definitely influencers out there. It might be 2020 by the time I'm posting posting this. That's awkward. But now at this point in time, there are influencers like James Charles who have the same level of fame, if not more, than some celebrities out there. Um, so it's just interesting. And I mean, like him or hate him, doesn't really matter. He is definitely an influential person and does have a lot of fame and just, I don't know, he has a lot of attention on him. But regardless of that, I want to talk really quickly about just the good launches because I don't want this to be a focus on like all the negative things because like I said, there's good, there's bad, there's ugly. And I think some of the really, really, I don't know, well executed launches are like the Desi and Katie collaboration with Joseph Colors, especially like their Friendication palette that they did. That seemed to be very well perceived and people seemed to really enjoy that palette. Not only, you know, the colors that were in it, but also like the way that the product performed. And I think... Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I remember, or like I consider Katie and Desi to be influencers that are unproblematic or non-problematic. I really don't know the way you would say that, but they're not problematic people, um, in my opinion. Again, I could totally be wrong. Then another collaboration that I think was done really well was the collaboration with Sophia Nygaard um, that ColourPop did. They came out with a couple things, but their lipsticks seemed to be just very on brand for, you know, Sophia Nygaard. And then also a more recent launch that I think was done well is the Jackie Aina collaboration with Anastasia Beverly Hills. I felt like the shades that she came out with were just perfect and like on brand for Jackie and I loved the outer packaging. I mean, not necessarily for me, but I thought that was very, again, reminiscent of her brand. So those are some good ones, but of course we are gonna be focusing more on the negative. I mean, who am I kidding? But there are definitely brands you know, at that point, and even now, there's probably more brands even now who think putting a name of like an influencer is just going to sell the product. And it did for a long time. I mean, you put Jaclyn Hill's name on anything, it was going to sell. You put Jeffree Star's name on anything, it's going to sell. You put these people who have such influence and have all these people who are going to buy whatever product these people put out simply because of their name. And it was working for brands for a long time. Now, I think that's definitely not the case anymore, at least as a whole, 
but I feel like brands kind of would just sacrifice the quality, the innovation of the product. It would be lacking in those two areas, but it didn't matter because it had this influencer's name on it and everyone's going to buy it. And I don't know, that was just, it's a weird thing because it's like, wouldn't you think that people are going to get the product, they're going to try it and they're going to say, oh, this is awful but not people who love that person. If you really are totally a fan of that person, you don't wanna go on and say, oh, this is awful. So I feel like those are very successful solely because of the name. And I feel like brands like Morphe, who constantly choose these same five creators to collaborate, collab with, do it because they know that their, you know, their followers are like their stands, they're hardcore fans of these people, and they're gonna buy whatever has their name on it. So they're gonna collab with the same people with the largest amount of followers who they know, like they've, it's been proven. They're gonna buy whatever has Jeffree Star's name on it. They're gonna buy whatever has Manny MUA's name on it. And they continue to do that, which is why they're like, let's just go the safe route and collab with these same five people because we've seen it. Their followers are gonna do whatever they tell them to do. It's kind of, I mean, it's definitely very manipulative. And I think that's something that is kind of a problem because a lot of times, like, if you look at James Charles demographics or if you look at I don't know about Manny and UAs, but if you look at these people's demographics, you'll notice there is a good chunk of them that are younger people. And I, I want to get into that later on, um, but definitely the influence that these creators have over a younger audience is unreal. So now I kind of want to talk about the behind the scenes of influencer collaborations. And this first part is definitely alleged. Like, I do not know this for a fact at all. But I'd be willing to bet that the majority of influencer collaborations, these creators do not have a hands-on role whatsoever in the creation process of, you know, if they're just creating one product or if they're creating a ton, I'd be willing to bet that the majority of the time they don't have a very hands-on role. I would like to think that at the very minimum, most brands allow their, whoever they're collaborating with, to choose the color scheme, whether they're working on a palette or if they're coming out with some lipsticks or whatever it is, to at least choose the colors or to choose the formula. But I don't know if that's always the case. And I don't want to speculate because I don't, I have no way of knowing if this is true or not, but I would imagine that there are very few brands that really work with their creators who they're collaborating with in a very, very hands-on way. Um, but I kind of want to talk about why brands want creators who are problematic, why they want creators, why they want scandals and why the scandals happen. Maybe they don't want scandals, but they do happen. And I'll start with the scandals part of it first, because I think, I don't know. I, one thing I think about a lot is like, why are Jaclyn Hill's releases, I mean, this is obvious, like we all know they're messy the majority of the time. There's a few that have gone off without a hitch, but even when they were doing the Becca Champagne Pop, they kind of came out with a second round of Champagne Pop style products and they had this little eyeshadow palette and it got taken off the market real quick. It just is very messy. And then she had the Vault Collection, which was just very messy. And then of course she had the, um, the lipstick, like, oh my goodness, why... The thing is, like, why do you think these are all so messy? And I think there's two reasons, potentially, that this could be the case. Like, they could be both one or the other. And I think one reason is because this gets hype surrounding the product. This gets people talking about it. You know, you have people doing anti-hauls, and you have people who are making whole videos about, you know, this product being sketchy. And that gets, you know, attention. And like they say, like, good press Oh my gosh, all press is good press. It really is, especially in the makeup community. I mean, you get people talking about this, it's going to be totally like something people remember. Like you don't necessarily remember the fifth launch that ColourPop came out with this year, but you remember, you know, that launch at that very time that Morphe came out with or whatever because of kind of the scandal revolving it. So the other thing that it could be, you know, on its own or in conjunction with the kind of messiness of the product release is that the influencer who's collaborating with this brand, for example, in some cases it is Jaclyn Hill, she may not, this is alleged, she may not know what is going on behind the scenes with that. She, because she does not have a hands-on role, she's kind of just, you know, doing her reveal of the product video, you know, showing her palette and doesn't know much about it. And she may say something that totally conflicts with the, the brands behind the scenes, like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe she said that. And I think a lot of times when you don't have a hands-on role, you, you just don't know as much about the product as, you know, someone who's, you know, working on it and really looking at all these different shades and where did they come from and where were they outsourced from, like all of that. You just don't know as much information about that when you're not in a hands-on role. And then similarly to that, like I mentioned earlier, problematic influencers. Why are they collaborating with these people? I mean, there's so many influencers on the platform. Like, why would you continue to create with the same five people? 
And I think, you know, like I mentioned with Morphe, why are they always collaborating with Jeffree Star? Why are they always collaborating with James Charles? Well, they have definitely, like, even people who are not in the makeup community, they know those names. And, I mean, when they have this constant, like, press surrounding them, the media is very interested in what new product James Charles is putting his name on, what new product is Jeffree Star putting his name on. And, you know, you'd say, why after only, like, a year or a year and a half, why would Morphe collaborate with Manny MUA? And I think he... From the opinion of what I've heard from other people, he's really, you know, trying to change. I don't know. I don't watch him. I haven't in a really long time, even before all of the drama get in, in the first situation went down. But why would they collaborate with him again? So, for, I mean, it, re, this is relative, but so soon after that scandal. They have so many other people they could co collaborate with. Well, people are interested in him. And so that is why, you know... They don't care if they're popular for a bad reason. It does not matter. If they're popular, they're popular, and that's who they want to go with. And the last thing in this kind of, like, subcategory, I keep, you know, in this section that I want to talk about is limited edition. This is something that there are many brands they come out with. This I could do a whole video on as well, but there are brands that come out with limited edition products that are truly limited edition. I mean, when the product sells out, they are not going to be coming back. Um, one thing I can think of kind of, is the um, Reese collaboration with Anastasia Beverly Hills. That did not come out for like a whole year. Like they launched that, I believe, in fall of 2018, maybe. Maybe I'm getting these dates wrong. But they launched this, you know, beautiful highlighter. And then once it was gone, it really was gone. I mean, it did kind of relaunch like a year later or whatever. But that's a good example of one that was pretty much limited edition. And there are products out there that truly are. But with collaborations, I feel like a lot of times they play on this, oh, this is limited edition. If you don't get it now, you're never going to get it without kind of saying it, you know? So like, it's not like they're saying it's limited edition. They're just saying, get it now before it's gone. When So that kind of makes the consumer, you know, think, hmm, this is not gonna be here for long. And they're kind of playing, brands are, on the consumer's fear of missing out, on their fear of not being able to get this product. And there's especially like, one, if they like the product, but if they also like the creator, they're even more incentivized to purchase this product. So as I mentioned earlier on in the video, I think a big thing that brands look for when they're like, who should we collaborate with is one aspect in an influencer they look for is, is their audience young? Is their audience impressionable? Will their audience purchase this product because it has their name on it? Because otherwise, why would they really take the time to collaborate with an influencer? Because they want some sort of extra benefit from it. Because if they're going to pay even a commission or, you know, just a straight up fee, it's got to be worth their money to collaborate with this person. So, you know, they want it to be profitable and I'm not going to fault them for that. But a lot of times I bet they look for the age of their, you know, their community, the age of their audience. And I think that's why a lot of times... They look for creators outside of the beauty community because even if their audience doesn't, you know, use makeup, if it has their name on it, they're probably going to buy it. If they're young kids, you know, so I think the timing of the Lele Pons X Tarte collaboration, I don't know much about her. I've heard she's problematic, but like, I really don't know. Um, but I'd be willing to bet that they decided to collaborate with her around this time of year because there's all these younger kids who watch her who may not ever use makeup, but they see that her name, their, you know, their person that they look up to is on this product and it's right around the holiday season. They can easily ask their parents, hey, will you get this product for me? You know, this is on my wish. Like, or even ask Santa, like, will you get this product for me? And they will because they're young and they're impressionable and they're playing off that. Brands are going to play off that. I think one thing that really proves how, I don't know, successful these launches are, although a lot of times we can't go and see the numbers behind everything, I think one thing that really proves just how successful these, you know, collaborations are and how, you know, how big of a role they play in sales is the Shane Dawson and, uh, Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star collaboration just this November. I mean, they came out with so many different, you know, little things. They came out with the Conspiracy Palette and the Mini Controversy Palette and all these lipsticks and the Shane Gloss and all of this stuff that sold out immediately. I mean, it broke down two or three of the websites that it was on. Like, the sites crashed. That is how many people were going on it at that very moment in time. I mean, millions of people. So they definitely had incredible influence. That was definitely one of, that was definitely the biggest collaboration I've ever seen. But I'd argue it's one of the biggest makeup product launches I've ever seen. Like, one of just the most influential, craziest, largest ones ever. And, you know, here's the thing. The reason I think that, you know, just shows how well all these other ones are doing is what is better than one influencer? Two. So it just kind of shows that doubles just the amount and it just, it shows how much of like the influence these people have. Whether you want to call them an influencer or not, they definitely have that role and they can definitely kind of persuade their followers to 
do what they want, which again, is kind of weird, but it's the truth. I kind of want to wrap this up by just saying people don't, like this is kind of a message to brands, kind of a, people want to support their favorites. You see, like they want to support their favorites, but imagine if these people weren't problematic. Imagine, I mean, there are so many creators on the platform. Imagine if you were collaborating with the people who people don't have beef with. I mean, they probably purchase the product just because they're like, oh, they're a nice person. Like they want to support the people that they're following. I mean, think about it. Like I watch Smokey Glow Hannah consistently. Every single thing that she, you know, posts on her channel, I'm watching. And I would buy pretty much anything from her. I know she did just announce that she was collaborating with Midas Cosmetics, but I feel like these larger brands could really profit off that. The people who are just diehard fans of these people who are good people. Like I don't understand why it always has to be the large, the tippy top people who are problematic in general. And you know, some brands are doing a better job of stepping out and collaborating with people who don't have a sketchy history, but there's also brands that could do better. And this is just kind of a wake up call. Like there's so many creators out there, choose those people. Um, so yes, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I mean, that's really all I have to say. I feel like I didn't have much of like a conclusion other than that. So if you enjoyed it, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up so I know to do more of these videos in the future. I enjoy doing chatty videos. Um, so if you guys want to see them, that is what I'll definitely do. Just let me know in the comment section down below. Also, let me know any thoughts you have on this idea. I love talking with you and just, you know, if you have just this giant comment to share, it does not matter. I will totally read it. I will totally interact with you because it just, I don't know, like I love hearing you guys, your perspective on all of this. So yes, if you're new here, you haven't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you do so by clicking that red button down below. Um, and if you want to click the notification bell right next to it, it's like this little bell icon. That way you can be notified for whenever I post in the future and you will never miss out on another video. Uh, I hope that you guys have had a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.